boys and lost girls, welcome to the Second Star Channel, the only channel on YouTube that combines the wonders of Disney with the artistic styles of jazz music. This week is another in the series that I'm calling Amusing History, a monthly series that covers one of Disney rides along with its rich history, all while providing some fun facts. This past month has been all about love, and no ride at Disneyland is more romantic than the Mad Tea Party ride. Of course, if I'm going to be talking about one Alice in Wonderland themed ride, I might as well talk about the other. Without further ado, here we go. The Mad Tea Party was one of the first rides that were available on the opening day, July 17th, 1955. Three small turntables which rotate clockwise, each holding six teacups within one large turntable rotating counterclockwise. Several concepts of the Mad Tea Party were originally much more outrageous compared to today's version. One drawing showed the Mad Hatter's dinner table featured in the center of the ride with various lanterns and decorations all around. Another drawing showed 20 teacups circling a central hub, making it similar to a racetrack with banked curves. Before I go any further, I should note that Walt Disney didn't actually design this attraction. Aero Development, an outside contractor, was responsible for building six of the rides for Disneyland's opening day. This included Mad Tea Party, Dumbo, Snow White's Adventures, Mr. Toad's Wild Ride, King Arthur's Carousel, and the Casey Jr. Circus Train. According to Imagineer and Disney legend Bob Gurr, all of the rides except for the carousel were prototypes. In other words, that meant all the developmental testing was to be done by the Disneyland guests. Gurr claimed that Arrow lost money on the making of the rides. When Walt Disney offered to make up the difference, the owners of the company refused saying it was just an honor to work with Disney. Their humility paid off. Disney contracted Arrow for many more rides and eventually bought a third of the company. For the first few months after the ride first opened, the teacup spun on a bare platform before it was painted with the psychedelic spiral that exists today. Also, during the ride's first two years, the teacups had no brakes or clutches. Nothing limited how fast they could be spun. It was also given slight modifications in 1972 with ornamental arches connecting the light posts and again in 1978 with the platform and teacups being repainted. In 1983, the whole attraction was completely remodeled and relocated to its present location near Matterhorn bobsleds. It also incorporated a few ideas from the original concepts such as the colorful Japanese garden lanterns. In 2004, the attraction was modified to make it more difficult to spin faster after a disabled rider lost their balance and slipped from a teacup. Did you know that sometimes the characters will join you in your teacup adventure? Always make sure to leave some room. Now let's move over to the other Alice in Wonderland inspired ride. The Alice in Wonderland ride opened on June 14, 1958. Original plans for the Disneyland show that was to be an Alice in Wonderland walkthrough attraction in 1955, but time and budgetary restrictions forced planners to defer the attraction and the design space was instead occupied by the Fantasyland Theater, which is now the location of the Pinocchio's Daring Journey. Three years later, an Alice in Wonderland ride through opened, with Mouseketeer Karen Pendleton dressed as Alice appearing at the ribbon cutting ceremony. Alice in Wonderland featured a stylized, oversized garden of towering blades of grass, dandelions, and a tall mushroom that served as the attraction's ticket booth. The caterpillar ride vehicles moved gracefully along a winding path of massive leaves, helping create the illusion that guests had shrunk to a tiny size, thus imitating Alice's experience in Wonderland. This attraction also differed by the vehicles negotiating a path that involved both upward and downward inclines requiring three wheels instead of four. The 1958 version of the ride, with sets adapted from the animated feature by Imagineer Claude Coates, had little in common with the Lewis Carroll source books. Instead, it used various environments suggested by the film to create loud, garish, and somewhat nightmarish scenes reminiscent of some of Fantasyland's other dark rides, such as Pinocchio's Daring Journey, Snow White's Scary Adventures, and Mr. Toad's Wild Ride. Sets, figures, and effects were considerably less sophisticated than the version that was replaced in 1984. Guests climb aboard the Caterpillar-themed vehicles and plunge down a dark rabbit hole into the Upside Down Room, a wholly original scene not found in the film, followed by the Oversized Room, where, as guests approach a doorway painted to look like a huge keyhole, Cheshire Cat figures appear. 
laughing maniacally. At the beginning of the ride, the caterpillar goes uphill and comes down a hill at the end. The Alice in Wonderland attraction is built on the second floor of the ride building that houses Mr. Toad's wild ride. In 1983, the ride was updated as part of an overall refurbishment of Fantasyland, also nicknamed the New Fantasyland, as the upside down and oversized rooms were eliminated and the Mad Hatter's unbirthday scene was moved to the very end of the ride. A new narration track by Catherine Boumal, the original voice of Alice, was recorded. To create more unified theming of Fantasyland, the Mad Tea Party attraction was relocated at the rear of Fantasyland to a spot adjacent to the Alice in Wonderland ride that same year. The Alice in Wonderland, however, did not reopen until 1984, one year after the rest of the new Fantasyland opened. On March 10, 2014, the rides closed for an extended refurbishment. In addition to regular maintenance, changes were made to the attraction's exterior. Walt Disney Imagineering also did some work on the ride's interior. The attraction officially reopened on July 4th, 2014 with several enhancements. Many scenes were updated with digitally projected images and effects, some of which include footage taken from the original film, as well as some new animation. The Cheshire Cat figures received new special effects being able to disappear and reappear, and new figures of Alice were added to the Tugly Room and Mad Tea Party scenes. One last thing. Just outside the Mad Tea Party ride is a leaf-shaped plaque imprinted with a quote from Randy Posh, the Carnegie Mellon University professor who gave a talk entitled The Last Lecture, really achieving your childhood dreams after learning that he had pancreatic cancer. What is his connection to Disney? Posh was an Imagineer, consulting for and also working directly with Disney during sabbaticals. He developed a software curriculum called The Owls Project, and the Disney-owned publishing house Hyperion published the book based on Pasha's speech. The message on the leaf, which was installed in 2009, reads, Be good at something. It makes you available. Have something to bring to the table, because that will make you more welcome. For many guests, including myself, the Mad Tea Party ride is a great way to slow down during a busy day and relax. It's not only a fun competition to see how fast you can spin your teacup, but it's also a simple ride that makes everything around you disappear into a blur, even if it's just for a couple minutes. The Alice in Wonderland attractions are iconic, and they will forever be on my must-do list at Disneyland. And there you have it, Lost Folks. Hopefully you enjoyed this in-depth history on the wonders of the Mad Tea Party and the Alice in Wonderland attractions. What other Disney parks and their history should I cover? Let me know in the comments section. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Stay in the loop and be informed on all history and fun facts Disney related. Make sure to hit that subscribe button. Until next time, keep on flying second star to the right and straight on till morning.